take a look and see what we got. Yeah, this is a little different than my last monitor. I got to get used to that. Fifth, fifth, there it is, fifth hour. Uh, let's see. Oh, fake student has not got his work done. Let's go to the grade screen. Yep, he didn't get his assignments turned in. He's in trouble. Oh, this screen is dirty too. I got to clean my screen. All right, this week, oh, we're we're kind of getting piled up here, guys. But look, this is this is it. We're getting to the end of the semester. We've got uh, some things planned. Module four. We got our final after that. I'm not. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do a module four test or just wrap it into the final. I might just make the module four test part of the final for the semester. I don't know. But I will I will make that decision soon because I gotta get that put together and on there. But we need to finish up module three before Thanksgiving break because I don't want you to go on break and forget everything. So we just have one lesson today, and then you have the test. So you have one lesson and then the test day this week. So we're gonna look at this one lesson on investigating quadratics. And then uh, I'll let you guys go for the test. But I want to show you, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and look at the lesson first, and then we're gonna, I'm going to show you some stuff on on paper, and i got a different slide to show you, too. See, investi here we go. Investigating. Oh, I, I went to the assignment. I need the lesson. Lesson. I like that, Hunter. That works. Here we go. All right, we're going to talk about all aboard the Quadratic Express. What? Okay. So Isabel has been hired by a major engineering firm and given a firm and given an important project. She is designing the path of a computer rail line to run between the airport and the freeway. The only constraint is the computer rail line must be the same distance from the airport as it is from the freeway at all times. At all times. Well, that sounds insane. The same distance at all times. She wonders what kind of shape that would be. So she's given some information to help her. She attempts to graph the airport, the freeway, and the on-ramp to the freeway on a coordinate plane. So the airport is at 0, 2 on the graph. The freeway is represented by the horizontal line, y equals negative 2. So the on-ramp is at 0, negative 2, right? So she realized the only way to do that to where everything's equidistance is to make a curve or a U shape, what we would call a parabola. So it'd be the same distance from the airport and the freeway at all times. So given his ability scenario, what location is the focus and the directrix? Directrix was like, okay, well, this is a new term, focus and directrix. So how can the equation of parabola be derived when given the focus and directrix? So I want to show you on, on paper here, what a focus and directrix are when we're talking about a parabola. So let's say I've got this point here. I'm going to put the point at uh, 1, 4. Okay, and this is uh, 1, 4. And this is going to be the focus point. This is the focus point because it talks about a focus and a directrix. And the directrix was a line... We'll say the, this one's going to be a line at y equals negative two. All right, so we got our three words here. Our plus okay, two, our two that's a terrible so arrow. Okay, so this is the directrix. Directrix. Y equals negative two. Okay, so if you have a parabola. It will have a focus and a directrix. We haven't talked about that with parabolas before, quadratics. So the focus is always located inside the parabola. So the parabola is going to wrap around the focus. The directrix is always on the outside. So here's the thing about a focus and a directrix. The vertex. The vertex of the parabola is always exactly halfway in between there. So see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six from the focus to the directrix. So at three, that's going to be the vertex. It's at one, one. 
Vortex. This is literally, yeah, I, I, this is why I want to talk about Chromebooks. And even more cool, as they talk about she's trying to design this rail line that's the same distance at all times, with a parabola, the, fo the focus on the direct tracks, you can design parabolas. Let's see if I can kind of make this look right. Uh, that's the same distance all the time. So that parabola is pretty close. Same distance. It's the same distance to the focus as the directrix anywhere, anywhere on this line. Now notice this is a distance of three, and that's a distance of three. All right, this is three. This is three. I want to illustrate that with a, here's a website that's really good at that. GeoGebra. All right, let me bring this down full screen. Okay, if we have, here, here it is, three and three. This one's, this is similar to one I have on paper. Notice it's a distance of three from the focus to the vertex and the vertex to the directrix line. And if I move a point anywhere along here, let's move over here. It's a distance of six to the focus and six to the directrix. But look, anywhere I move it, it's the exact same distance from the focus to the directrix. 9.87. Anywhere over here, 11.83. So that is, in a parabola, you have a directrix and a focus point that are going to be the same distance from any point on the parabola. It's pretty cool. We haven't looked at this before, but it, it's what we're going to play with in this lesson. And the nice thing is we have all the knowledge that we need to write the equation for that parabola. We can do that. And I'll show you how. Uh, let's see. First thing, we know the vertex, right? And so we know the vertex is, let's see, f of x equal a x minus h squared plus k, right? That's the vertex form, vertex form of a quadratic equation, right? And we know the vertex is located at hk. So we can write this equation, f of x equal, we don't know what a is at this point, but we know that the vertex is at 1, 1. So this is x minus 1 squared, and that's plus 1. So this is close. This will get us the parabola that has the right vertex. We just don't know how wide this parabola is. Right? So we don't know what A is. But there's a way to find out. Let's go back to our lesson. Go to page two here. All right. There's a way to it. Oh, let's see. I'm going to move that up out of the way. All right. All right, this talks about the directrix of focus. Now, notice on this, let's see, can I put, make it bigger? No, that one's not working. On this one, the focus is on the bottom. So, this is an upside down parabola. Remember, the focus is always inside the parabola. And that distance is the same always between there. Now, notice over here. These distances are the focal length that are equal, like distance of three from the directrix to the vertex and the vertex to the directrix. There's a relationship between the focal length and the coefficient in the quadratic equation. Here it is, one over four P equals A. I'm gonna write that. One over four P equals A. All right, let's go back to our, our drawing. 1 over 4p. 1 over 4p equals a. Well, what's a? Well, a is this coefficient right there. Then what's p? Okay. p is the focal length. The focal length. Yeah, the length. 
right here. This is the focal length. That's how far it is from the focus to the vertex. Focal length. How far is it from the vertex to the focus? Three. Which is also the diff distance from the vertex to the directories. Because it's always the vertex is always right in the middle between the two. But three. So in this case, one over four times three gives us our A. It's one twelfth. So this is the equation of this parabola that will have the focus at 1, 4, and the direct 6 or y equals negative 2. Oh, well, let's put that on Desmos and see how that looks, see if it looks about right. So the focal point was at 1, 4. So let's label that. The direct was y equals negative 2. So that's that blue line there. Uh, our vertex is at 1, 1, so let's label that. And we said that, let's zoom out a little bit, give us a little room. So we said the equation is y equals 1 12th, parentheses, x minus 1 squared plus 1. So there is the problem, and that looks pretty close to what we had on our paper, pretty close. Uh, if we look at this point, and let's say let's say over here at negative five. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a distance of six to right there. If we go down one, two, three, four, five, six. It's it's the same six to get right here. So that's working. That that point is exactly the same distance from the focus as it is the directrix line. Same thing here, it's six to this point and six down. It's three to here, three down. And in between there, it's distances between three and six. But that is the parabola that we can get just from having the focal point and the directrix line. I'll try another one? Let's, let's try another one. Let's see. Um, let's see, here's one. Example, directrix of y equals negative 2, and the focus is at 2, 2. So what's halfway? Well, if the line is at negative 2 and the focus is at positive 2, it's going to be right on the x-axis, the, the vertex is. But it's going to be at x equals 2. See, the vertex is 2, 0. See that on that? Because that's at 2, 2, and that's at negative 2. So the vertex is going to be right in the middle. And the focal length will be 2, because that's the distance from the focal point there. So substitute that in for there. 1 eighth will be A. So when we write the equation, 1 eighth is the A. So we can write the vertex is at 0, 2. Or 2, 0. Pardon me. 2, 0. So we substitute the, the 2 in for H, the 0 in for K, and the 1 8 for A. We got 1 8 X minus 2 squared. See, we're at the lesson summary. That's all this whole lesson is. That's why we, we threw this in with the test this week. It's very short. Let's see if we can do, I'm going to go ahead and pull up another graph real quick. Let's do this one right here, negative 1, negative 3. Right. Negative 1, negative 3. And the directrix line is at y equals negative 1. Okay. So I got that drawn on a paper. Negative 1, negative 3 is the focal point. y equals negative 1 is the directrix line. So where's the vertex? Somebody give me the coordinates of the vertex. If the directrix line is right there at negative 1 and the focal point is negative 1, negative 3. Put that in the chat. Give me the vertex of the parabola that has a focal point at negative 1, negative 3 and a directrix line at negative 1. Where would the vertex be found? I can go back and show you this if you need it. 
Where's the vertex? Remember, the vertex is always halfway between them, but exactly in line. So where's the vertex here? And I'm going to put this uh, equation down here that we have 1 over 4P equals A. And then we also have f of x equals a x minus h squared plus k. All right. Uh, let's see. Bethany says it's at negative one, negative two. Let's see. Where would that be? Negative one, negative. That would be right here. Do you agree? Who agrees with that? Who disagrees with that? Who thinks it's somewhere else? Bethany says our vertex must be right there. Which she said was the point negative one, negative two. Negative one, negative two. Bethany, you're absolutely correct. Because it's halfway between the focus and the directrix line. And it's always the same X. It's always right above or below, right? So what is P? If we have to write the A, which is one time one time one divided by four times P, what is P in this scenario? I'll remind you over here. P is the focal length, which was three here because that was the distance between the focus and the ver the vertex. So what is P on this one? Bethany, you may be the only one that knows how to do this when we go to the assignment. We'll see. Uh, let's see. I'm seeing ones. Sure, that's how far it is. That's just a distance of one. So that means if we're writing the equation for this, it's f of x equal. If p is one, this is just one fourth. x minus, what's our h? Writing the equation now. Remember the vertex of a parabola is at 8K. So, yes, it's negative 1. So, let's see. X minus negative 1. That's the same as X plus 1. Right? Because x minus negative 1 is x plus 1. So our, this, yeah, x is h, or h is negative 1. That's right. You got it, Sean. And then our k plus k, well, that's that's the other part of our, so it's minus 2. So that is the equation for the parabola, almost. There's still one thing missing from that. Can anyone figure out what it is? Because if I graph that, it's not going to be exactly what we need. It's going to be close. In fact, I, I will go graph it just to show you. Uh, let's go back here and take off all this stuff. I'm going to graph what I just wrote as our equation here. F of X equals one fourth. Uh, print, oh, parentheses X plus one squared minus two okay there is the problem of the equation we just wrote here i'll put the directrix on here too and the focal point directrix is y equals negative one and the focal point was uh negative one negative three anyone see anything wrong Let's take a look at it there. Anyone see anything wrong? Focal point right there, directrix line. I don't know if this is a problem, but there aren't points on the on the on the parabola? Yeah. Uh not necessarily. Let me show you the other one that we had done and see if you notice anything different. 
we put the vertex points the only point put in the other we could put the vertex point on here i mean just to have that negative one negative ne negative oops, negative two oops, two there we go so there we got the vertex point on there but still there's a problem there's a big difference between this one and this one The line is actually on the parabola instead of below. Correct. What did we say about the focal point? The focal point is always inside the parabola. Right? That's the point of focus of the parabola. That's like right in the middle of it. This focal point is not in the middle of our parabola because our equation is wrong. It's very, very close. It is one fourth wide that's that's correct the vertex is correct it is x plus one and minus two the thing that fixes it is just because we know the focal point is below it we need to put a negative we just have to turn it upside down when we write our equation oh this has to be a downward facing parabola because the focal point is below the directrix We were so close, we just have to put a negative in front of it so that when it draws, it draws down. Because the focal point should be inside. That's the only way in this problem that we know whether it's a positive or a negative A. We know it's negative because the focal point is supposed to be inside. And since the directrix is above it, we know this must be a downward facing oh, downward facing parabola. See, this one, the focal point was above the directrix, so this is an upward facing parabola. That's the only way you'll know whether it's supposed to be a positive or negative. This, this doesn't tell you for P, because P is always going to be positive. P is always going to be the distance between the two. Well, that's a positive distance. It's three. That's three away. This is one away. Okay, so if you're looking at distance, distance is always positive. We don't say, well, from my house to the school is negative five miles. No, it's five miles. Right? So since this is always a positive, you'll always have a positive number. You have to look to see where is the directrix, where is the focal point because I need to make sure the focal point is inside my parabola. That's all That's all you have to do is pay attention to which direction should your parabola go. All right. And say, oh, they say they grew theirs upside down too, see? Because the directrix, this is the same problem we just did right here. Let's see, did they, where's their, see they got one fourth is their A, And then note, since our parallel face is downward, A will be negative. See, that's only just looking at it. it said, oh, we have to make A negative. So they got the same equation. Negative one-fourth, X plus one, minus two. All right, and there's the lesson summary, guys. That's, that's all we added this week. We already knew a lot about quadratics. We already knew how to write the vertex formula. So here's the lesson summary, which just talks about the focus point and the directrix. And it's, they put plus P on here and minus P because P is the distance between there. So if, if this is at three, that's six. So three, so it's always just the distance between the vertex and the focus of the vertex and the directrix. So, so this just lists all the parts, the equation, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the focus, directrix, and the opening. Upward if it's bigger than zero downward a is less than zero so. all right so let me look at the uh, assignment that goes with this that's again uh derive the equation of a parabola gives you the focus and directrix just like we did on those two problems gives you the focus and directrix uh gives you the focus and directrix focus and direct so there's four in a row that you're supposed to come up with the equation and this one, they give you the focus and directrix, but they want the equation in standard form. That's the only difference. Now, if you remember, we can look at that real quick. If you remember how to do that, 
All we have to do is do the math. You would take this and you say, okay, so it equals negative one fourth x plus one times x plus one minus two. And then you'd multiply those together. Negative one fourth x squared plus two x plus one minus two. Distribute that. Negative one fourth x squared. Negative one fourth plus two is negative one half x plus one. Oh, minus one fourth. Minus one fourth minus two. So it's negative one fourth x squared, negative one half x minus nine fourths. This one's a messy one because it had, but that's what you would do is you would just multiply this out. And now this is standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C. It just happens to have fractions okay. as the equation. And so this one does too. It has just a fraction in the, four, in the front, but it turns out some nicer numbers. But still, you're just taking the focus of the directrix and finding the equation. All right, let's look. Then you have the practice test. Practice test, which has how many problems? 20, I think. 20, yes. Oh, that's, oh, now it's displaying properly. Okay. So it's got 20. So, you know, you'll do all of those. Yeah, I'm going to do that just so I turn it in and it lets me go to the test. Let's look at the test real quick. Hey, I got that one right. There is a video of me taking the practice test. So if you take the practice test and you don't do well, I took the practice test as well. And look, I show all of my work and I talk about it. Now, oh, let, let, let me tell you, let me tell you the downside what I discovered afterwards. The settings for this practice test were set to randomize the order of the questions. So when you take the practice test, your questions may not be in the same order. So if you're looking, oh, I didn't know how to do number three, go look at Mr. Brock's number three. It's probably not my number three. You you may have to search to find out where that same problem is. Should have the same problem or a problem that just has different numbers, but it's the exact same problem. But you may have to look for it because for some reason it was set to randomize it. I don't like it to randomize the practice test because there's no reason to do that. But it did. It put them in random order. So sorry about that. The video may not be in the same order. But it should have the same questions. I, I believe it has the same questions. So anyway, but let's look at the test real quick. All right. So uh, factoring quadratic test part one has, you know, factor completely. So factor completely, which is a factor of, uh, determine the equation of this graph. And it's a, there's the vertex. So vertex form. What's the average rate of change from x equals 1, which is right there, to x equals 4? So from this point on the graph to this point on the graph, what's the slope? Average rate of change means slope. So there, let's see, wait, 10 questions. Which of the following is the solution of this? And look at that, since it's a compact solution, you probably have to do the quadratic formula, which means you need to set this equal to 0. Set equal to zero, find out what your A, B, and C is. Use the quadratic formula. This one probably two. It's already set equal to zero, though, so that one's easier. So, but there it is. You have 10 questions, and let's look at part two. You have four questions. Let's look at the four questions. Show all the work to factor this completely, and you can do that how you like. You know, but you need to factor that if you do factor by grouping, if you just do factoring, if you know, well, however method of factoring you like to use. Uh, show all work to solve this. Again, you can solve that by factoring. You can solve it by completing the square. You can solve it by using the quadratic formula. You have many options on how to solve this quadratic equation. Uh, here's two functions. State the axis of symmetry for each function. 
and how do you find it? One is an equation. The other is a graph. So you need to know how to find the axis of symmetry for equation, how to find the axis of symmetry on a graph of a parabola. So if you need to study that before you take the test, study that, because I'm letting you know that's on there. Those aren't terribly difficult at all. You got in your notes, the, the little equation to find it here. Just look in your notes. If you wrote the notes, if not, go back and look through the lesson summaries. And a graph ought to be real easy for the axis of symmetry. Uh, and the last one, the functions, here's f of x and g of x, two different functions, have been rewritten using the completed the square knowledge and the method. Apply your knowledge of the functions in the vertex form to determine if the vertex is the minimum or maximum. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the completing the square. It said that's already done. All it says is here's an equation. And here's an equation. And you need to tell me for each equation, for f of x, is the vertex a minimum or is it a maximum? Is the vertex the lowest point on the graph or is it the highest point on the graph? And how do you know that? Oh, sorry. Explain your reason. How do you know that? How do you know that the vertex is the maximum? Or how do you know that the vertex is the minimum? How do you know that? So tell me that for f of x and tell me that for g of x. And I'll give you a hint, they're not the same. One is the maximum, one is the minimum. You have to tell me which is which and how do you know. But that's the four problems. All right, guys, this is Thanksgiving week on Friday afternoon, once we're done with school Friday. Uh, this is a B-Day Friday, so I will be in class Friday. But I will tell you, I will not be in class Thursday. We will not have class Thursday. I have to go to Little Rock to have a checkup with my oncologist. It's just a checkup. There's no, there's no reoccurring leukemia or nothing. It's just my my checkup. I have to go to every so many months. So I'll go down there on Thursday. So I will not be here. So we will only have class on Friday. So if your grades below seventy, or if you're just in the middle of the test, yes. If you're in the middle of the test and want to ask Mr. Brock something, you can do that. You can come in and say, hey, I'm trying to do number 12, and I don't remember how to do this. I'm not going to tell you the answer to number 12, but I may talk about how to do that type of problem, which can help you. So don't be afraid to come see me on Friday, even if you're in the middle of the test and suddenly you're lost. Uh-oh. How do I find out whether that vertex is a minimum or a maximum? Well, we can talk about minimum and maximum vertexes. I'm not going to talk specifically about that problem, but I'll talk about how to find the minimum maximum vertex. So. All right, guys, have a have a super happy week and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. See lots of family, eat too much, play games, all the fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you either Friday or no. <laughs>